Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and I'm going to show you how to do word problems with conic section equations. Uh, often they're tunnel or bridge problems that we'll call these in mathematics. Uh, in this case, a tunnel is the shape of a parabola. It means the shape right here is parabolic, it is the shape of a parabola. The maximum height is 16 meters, as indicated in the diagram, and its width is 16 meters at the base. And most important, that point right there, we know. We can talk about that fact that we know that this is eight, eight, eight centimeters, excuse me, eight meters in uh, from the y-axis, or the x-y coordinate would be eight, and then it would be down 16, so negative 16 from the top there. Okay, and that's the tunnel that we have that we're looking at. What is the vertical clearance? The question we're going to try to find out. What is the vertical clearance four meters from the edge of the tunnel? So if this is eight, four is halfway between here. We basically want to know what the tunnel height is at that point where we're four meters from either the middle or in this case, coincidentally, four meters from the edge of the tunnel, four meters in. So that's what we want to know. We want to know what the height is. So the first thing we need to do is get an equation with all conic word problems, as much as you can. Try to make it with a no shifting, no translation parabola or whatever conic equation you're working with. So we don't want to deal with an x minus h quantity squared and a y minus k type of equation. We want to minimize this issue. So the equation that we're looking at is an upside down parabola. Most books will have like 4a here as the general equation there. 4a. You make sure you can see that and make sure you read that as a 4a, almost like a 4.9. So 4 and then the value variable a. Remember, a is the distance to the focus point, but right now we're not worried about that distance. We just need the equation. So when you look at this equation, we're given an x and a y. Let's make. I didn't finish my statement there earlier, I'm sorry. Let's make the H and K zero. Let's always, 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 whenever possible, either make the center or on a parabola, the vertex equal to zero, zero. So the way we've set this problem up already with the diagram, it is a zero, zero vertex. So we do have the equation now, X squared is equal to four A and then Y. Since we have an xy coordinate, an xy coordinate of 8 and negative 16, we can plug those in right there and determine what a is. We don't need to know how far the vertex to the focal point is, which is the length a, but what we do need is the equation to be able to plug and chug other values, for instance, the 4 uh, meters from the edge of the tunnel. So plugging this in, I always, uh, I'm kind of old school with this, so if you're watching this, you're already grabbing a calculator most likely. I tend not to grab a calculator. I tend to leave everything in factored form as much as possible. And at the end, if I need a calculator, I'll grab it. So I'm gonna put in the input, excuse me, I'm gonna put in the X and Y, substitute the X and Y, plug in the X and Y as I like to say, and now chug out what A would be. So A is going to equal here 8 squared divided by the two multipliers, 4 and a negative 16. Notice again, I still haven't thought about what 4 times 16 is or 8 squared or any of that. I like to work it out this way so that I can see the, the, the numbers in action, kind of see them break down. For instance, the 16 has an 8 in it. I'm going to cross off the 16 and cross off one of the 8s by taking off the square point, and it leaves a 2 down here. You can also see that you got 2 times 4 on the bottom and 8 on the top. So we're going to get a value of 1 here. Although this one was pretty obvious to see. Sorry, I'm just making it a little cleaner. Although this one I felt was maybe pretty obvious to see that 4 times 16 and 8 squared are the same. But it's, it's always a good habit to do this method when working the algebra. Students often take way too long grabbing a calculator to figure out all these little parts. And did we need a calculator at all? No, we didn't. Almost lost the negative sign there. Don't want to lose the negative sign. So A is negative 1. We now have an equation that we can use. Our equation is x squared, 4 times A, which is negative 1. So negative 4y. This parabola, this parabola is of the equation x squared minus 4y. All xy points, all xy points on this parabola satisfy this equation. Therefore, if I want to know what the y value is at that point, we know that it's x 
is the uh, is four. So what is the y value we're going to plug and chug? So if we put a four in here, you get four squared is equal to negative four y. Okay, again, I mean obviously the numbers are pretty simple here, but you try not to use calculators when you don't need to. So if we're going to divide by four. We're going to get that force cancel. Leave that. We're going to get negative. So y is negative four there. Y is negative four. So we went four over and down four. That means if the total height was 16 feet from the middle, the total height was 16 feet from the middle, and that location is down four. Got to get that right. Down four. That leaves 16 minus 4 feet. It leaves 12 feet of clearance at that point. 12 feet of clearance at that point. Okay, let's try another one. Another one I have set up here. Okay, this is a railroad tunnel that's shaped like a semi-ellipse. Railroad tunnel that's shaped like a semi-ellipse. So I don't have a picture or a diagram with this one. I'm going to just try to draw any, any type of elliptical shape. Okay, any type of elliptical shape. It's not pretty, but it works. The height of the tunnel at the center, the height of the tunnel at the center is 44. Okay, and the vertical clearance, and the vertical clearance must be 22 feet, 22 feet um, at a point 9 feet from the center. What is the equation? So this one gives us the vertical clearance. So they say that a vertical, let's see, <coughs> excuse me, need to have 22 feet, 9 feet from the center. So 9 feet from the center, that means I'm going to go over 9, and I need it to go up 22. That means that coordinate right there is 9, 22. They give us, kind of in the words, they give us a point on the graph. They give us a point on the graph. Okay? So, uh, let's see. I always want to make this equation x squared, okay, over, and again, I'm just going to use a squared here. Sometimes the book is a, and sometimes it's b, and I just tend to just do a squared here and then determine what the value is. Forget about what we named the variable. And if we're going to make it so that the center is 0, 0, center is 0, 0, that means we have no shift or no translations um, in the x and y components, which makes the equation a lot easier. Looks like if I'm going to go 9 feet out, 9 feet out, and it's still 22 high, let's assume, let's assume that this is going to have a transverse axis that's horizontal. I may have be doing this wrong, but I'll double check my math at the end. So let's assume a transverse axis, that's the major axis, major axis, not the transverse axis, sorry. Um, the major axis here, okay, let's assume is horizontal. So let's assume that to be horizontal. I might be wrong here because I'm double checking it as I speak, but let's go with that. If this is the case then, this is the transverse or half the transverse axis, which is 44. So I always look at this as forget the name of the axis, the y displacement, the vertical displacement belongs underneath the y part of this equation. So underneath there is a 44 top. It means right off the bat, I've got y squared over 44 squared. It displaces 44 up in this ellipse, technically 44 down, but we're only dealing with half an ellipse, semi, half the ellipse. So what that leaves is, is what's the a? What's this a coordinate? What is that a, not coordinate, but what is that a value, which is our displacement all the way out in the horizontal or the x direction. Well, they did give us this point, 9 over should be 22 high. So I could put the 9 right there and the 22 right there. And I, I think that's what we're going to have to do. 9 squared over a squared. I'm solving for this a, trying to figure out what this a is. So 9 squared, sorry about that, 9, plus what do we got? 22 squared over 44 squared is equal to 1. Again, don't grab the calculator. We don't need to know what 22 squared is at this moment. Later we might, but we don't right now. So let's play around with this. Figure out, figure out if we can get the A, or what I say is the displacement under X, or the horizontal displacement of this equation. So 9 squared is equal to A squared. I'm trying to make my 9s and my A's look different, sorry. 
And that, I'm going to subtract off that 22 over 44 squared. By the way, can you see what that 22 over 44 looks like? Looks like the 22 squared, two 22s and two 44s cancel, right? And aren't we going to be left with, let's see, I got a one, bring down the one, and I'm going to subtract off that. Well, if I cancel the 22 and the 44, doesn't that just leave a two? So isn't this really just one over two quantity squared or one fourth? So now we know that this is three fourths, one minus a quarter, three fourths. So nine squared over a squared is equal to three fourths here. Uh, cross multiply, three a squared is equal to four times nine squared. Don't get a calculator out, may not be necessary people. Set it down, I know you're trying to grab it, let it go, let it go. All right, divide by three, divide by three. You can see a calculator really won't help us at all. We don't need it at all. A is equal to, A is A squared. So let's start with A squared. A squared is equal to, let's see, the three cancels. There's two nines in there, right? Nine squared, that's nine times nine. Cancels with one of them and leaves a three. So what do I have left on top? Four times a nine times a three, a 12 times a nine. So if you know your multiplication table, that shouldn't be a problem. 12 times a 9 is 108. 108. 12 times 9, 108. Everybody got that? Basically, it's 90 and 18, so 108. Now, a squared is what belongs here. So the question is, is what's the equation? I think we're done. We have x squared over 108. 108, 108, because a squared is 108. Don't square it going in, okay? Plus y squared over 44 squared, which I don't know, and I'm not in the moment. I don't really need to know. I don't like to use the calculator if I don't absolutely need to. That is the equation. Something that that we should realize. Um, what is uh, is this a semi ellipse or vertical? Or is this semi-ellipse more horizontal? Now, I actually determined that I was wrong in my assumption in the way I drew it up here. I drew it as in more horizontal, and the reality is, is the way it looks, is that this is one of these types of ellipse, these types of ellipse that's more vertical than it is horizontal. Okay, the square root of 108 is about 10, so we know that that's about 10 over 10 point something over from the middle, and it's still 44 up, 44 up. So it gives you an idea what this looks like. Well, I hope I have helped trying to use word problems with the conic section. I'm David from Electric Teaching. Thank you for listening.